Uh, you guys so have no, questions? Yeah. So, um, noticed uh, a little later in the game, LB went out for a little while and came back in. Just want to check if he's doing okay. Um, I, I think uh, anytime you get a, a, a kick to the shin, calf, wherever, there's a little bit of a bruise, but he should be fine for the game. I mean, by the time we got back on the on our long trip back, he was he was a lot better. Uh, Coach, UCLA has not been doing very well from three pointers and free throws lately. Have you uh, been able to combat that in practice? You working on something? Yep. Well, <laughs> uh, we played Saturday night. We got back to campus. We left Eugene at ten o'clock by flight and got back to campus at six o'clock in the evening yesterday. So we haven't even had a chance to prep for UCLA yet. We won't do that until today and then play them tomorrow. And LB was, looked really comfortable in the first half, um, more so than I'm seeing him a lot of the season. Looked really comfortable taking some of his shots, not forcing anything. How are you planning on keeping that going against UCLA and USC? You know, I, I think... Uh, I felt like our whole team was really comfortable in, in the first half. In fact, it's the best basketball we played uh, offensively in, in a Pac-12 game uh, this year. And just in terms of our ability to move the ball, shoot it within rhythm, uh, make the extra pass. I felt like we did a good job of controlling tempo. Sometimes the shot clock would get down under five seconds before we shot it. But they were all good shots and good possessions, which allowed – uh, CJ to play comfortable, uh, Robo was comfortable, A2, uh, Ahmed was comfortable, Vianti, everybody looked that way. And then in the second half of the game, uh, it becomes contagious when you knock a team out of rhythm. You, you take a, a bad luck uh, or a hurried shot or you don't make that extra pass, it can look the other way. That was the tale of the two halves, really the last – uh, 10 minutes of the game, too. So uh, I felt they started to look uncomfortable now playing together again. And we've looked that way before. So I'm hoping that they can understand even more, through we, although we continue to teach and teach on this area, the more in rhythm, in sync, playing the right way, as I call it, the better they're going to look as a team and the more success we're going to have. So those are the growing pains uh, with this group so far this year. Coach, how do you plan to um... – to match up against Moses Brown with his seven foot one height. Ooh, have you stand on top of a two <laughs> and play him? In, play, you guys can play him in the post. <laughs> you know, um, you don't realize how big they are, long, athletic they are until they until they get here. That that is the I believe the second tallest team in the country behind uh, uh, Syracuse is what I'm hearing, and that's a lot of legs and a lot of arms all over the floor, and he's just another piece of it. So. Uh, you're not going to match them unless uh, Devontae Cooper comes out and does some amazing things for us and plays well. He could get some minutes playing against him. But for the most part, you've just got to make sure you pay attention to, to detail to try your best to neutralize him so he doesn't have a monster game on you. But you're not going to match him or stop him. He's just too big and too good, too talented, too athletic. And looking ahead to USC later this week as well, um, Benny Boatwright's been playing real well for USC. They've won three in a row now. How do you plan on containing him? You know, I've always said when the conference hits, USC will have a chance to reset their season, and they've done a good job of that. Uh, both of these teams that are coming in here, UCLA tomorrow, USC on Saturday, uh, you're getting to the part of your schedule when you talk about uh, Oregon State, Oregon, UCLA, USC, Arizona, Arizona State, they're the most athletic teams uh, that we've, we've played against this season, and they're big and they're long and they're athletic. And particularly with the new guys, uh, they'll get a real good feel for playing at this level and what it's all about when you see that kind of size and athleticism comes in here. You have to neutralize that again. Uh, number one, playing defense. Uh, playing as a team, playing together, and, and, and doing all those little things, the blocking out, the rebounding. You've got to do that. You cannot let somebody's athleticism uh, rise up on you. I'm assuming what happened in the, in the Oregon game. We had everything under wraps, and all of a sudden, turnover, 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 turnover. They get out and run in transition. Here comes those athletes. Here comes the crowd, and it'll be a different game for us. So the attention to detail in these games are going to be huge with these athletic teams coming in here. Um, Deontay Daniels 
how do you plan to? Is he still going to be shooting three pointers? Do you plan to utilize him behind the arc there? You know, when 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 people look at our offense, we do not uh, discourage anybody from running on our team, uh, from shooting threes when they're comfortable and, and wide open on our team. Uh, I think the thing that's happened to Beyonce has happened to Carter a little bit too. Uh, they're on scouting reports now, unlike last year. And teams are putting athletes and extending their defense and doing some things to them. So that requires a lot more movement on their part, a lot more defense on their part, our part, so we can get out and run to get them some wide open looks in transition. That's why it's huge to defend because it's very difficult to find all of those shooters. If you're sitting in the half court, it's a little bit more easier to, to sit on shooters and everything. So uh, I'm hoping... Uh, for our sake, that both of those guys kind of get uncorked again and, and start to get shots off, get threes up and those things. In order to do that, we have to play defense. We have to get teams to turn it over. We've got to get teams to miss because teams are at your mercy when you can get out and run when they miss. If teams are scoring on you, they can put the press on you. They'll slow you down, very similar to Oregon State. Oregon and even UCLA plays that way as well too. where they'll, If they can score on you, they can kind of keep you in half-court control, control tempo a little bit better. And Coach, you uh, talked a little bit about the turnovers um, against Oregon and what you plan on doing against uh, UCLA and USC to prevent that. I hope not turn the ball over because and, and two things happen when you when you turn it over, uh, particularly when you turn it over up top of your offense because you really don't get a chance to get back and play defense, and you give a team a lot of energy they, they can turn you over and then get down the floor and dunk the ball and do those things. And even more importantly, it takes offensive possessions away from you. And and when we shoot the ball and we play the right way, we are a really good shooting team. We want those possessions to be in our favor. So uh, we cannot. There's two stats that I look at, halftime and particularly at the end of the game. And that's number one stat is turnovers. How well we took care of the ball because if we took care of it, that means we're getting shots. And then number two is assist. And we're in that 20-plus range of assists. That means you've shared the ball. And everybody's touched it. We've played the right way. Everybody gets an opportunity to score. So if you got low turnovers, you should have higher assists. If you got high assists, there's a pretty good chance we've won that game and we're right there to win that game. 